to tonight's match. Tonight, we get to celebrate our four amazing seniors, so we invite you to take a moment to help us honor them and their time as Claire Ford Lady Coke Volleyball players. First up, we have setter, number six, Ashton Roberts. and Tabitha. They encouraged her to try something new and it has shaped her into the player she is today. Her favorite memories from volleyball include the canoe trip, Peyton slipping on the court during a scrimmage, the varsity sleepover, and falling out of Grace's car. She says she will never forget the endless laughter with all the girls and the amazing friendship she's made over the last four years. Outside of volleyball, Ashton is also a member of the softball team. When not playing sports, she loves to spend time with friends and family, go hiking, and also go shopping. After graduation, she plans to attend a four-year college to major in pediatric nursing and continue her career in softball at the collegiate level. Ashton's advice to the underclassmen would be to enjoy the little things. Don't take anything for granted. Cherish every moment like it's your last because four years of high school will be over before you know it. Know that you have been created with everything you need to be successful and to push yourself beyond your limits and never give up trying things. She would like to take her fam thank her family for their endless support and always cheering her on, her friends for always being there for her no matter what, her teammates and coaches for making this one of the best years she's had while teaching her about the game and pushing her to reach her potential. Coach Lee for stepping up to help coach and for always believing in her. And last but not least, quote, I want to thank my parents for supporting me and always pushing me to be the best I can be. All the hours spent to help me practice and time sacrificed to help me become who I am today. I am so thankful for you and I don't know what I would do without you guys. I love you both. Number six, setter, Ashton Roberts. Church. 
After graduation, she plans on attending college to major in education and become a teacher. Her advice for underclassmen would be to enjoy every single moment because four years of high school isn't enough time. Also, to work hard every day, it's one season of the year that you get to play, so give it everything you've got. She would like to give a special thanks to her parents for always being her biggest supporters, her teammates for being so fun and encouraging, her coaches for helping her love the game, and lastly to the other seniors that she has gotten to grow up playing with. She loves you all. Number seven, pin hitter, Grace Wilkins. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside Clear Fork High School for tonight's MOAC Senior Night Clash between the Shelby Whippets and the homestanding Lady Colts of Clear Fork. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray. And Hayden, you know these Whippets? We've seen them earlier this season. We've also seen these Lady Colts. Clear Fork coming in with a 5-12 and 12 record. Shelby coming in with a 6-12 and 12 record. These two teams just want to try and get better before the tournament. Yeah, I think what we have tonight is we got a couple teams who are still trying to find out their true identity and get their true system going before the tournament starts. They've had some success throughout the year, but obviously their record's probably not gone exactly how they want. So both of them have a good opportunity tonight to really battle it out and add another win to the win column. We welcome you inside tonight's pregame show as we introduce you to the roster for the Lady Whippets of Shelby. Two seniors on the squad and for senior night it was a very nice gesture from Clear Fork. They gave roses to McKenna Miller and Riley Lewis but a lot of talent on the squad led by junior Maya Sa Siebert fifth in aces with 39 and Marley Albert, who pretty much leads, is in the leaders of every category, has a chance of being all MOAC this year. She's sixth in kills, first in aces, sixth in digs, third in assists. So they're, you know, offense somewhat goes through her, but they're balanced. Yeah, you know, Marley Albert, she has 152 kills on the year, 45 aces. She's a dominant force out on the court, but like you said, they don't revolve around her and they have really good chemistry. So it's not just a one-dimensional team. Looking now at the Clear Fork Lady Colt roster. They have four seniors, Abby Sauter, Ashton Roberts, Adrian Wirtz, Becca Conrad, as well as Grace Wolfgang, who sang our national anthem tonight. Did a really good job at that. She says sophomore on the lineup, she's actually a senior, but they go through Becca Conrad. Yeah, you know, when you look at Conrad's stats, 147 kills, 29 aces. Next closest on the team is Adrian Wirtz with 45 kills. So Conrad's height is a great advantage for her, and a lot of the time that sets up some really nice opportunities for her to get those kills. So it's going to be interesting to see how they game plan around Conrad tonight and if the offense runs through her this evening. And that's one of our keys to the game for Clear Fork. Give Conrad chances. Coming in with 147 kills, 45% kill percentage. As for Shelby, stay balanced. They have multiple scores. Miller with 216. Albert with 152. Lafone with 94. Grove with 84. So stay balanced. And then both sides limit mistakes. And we'll see who comes out of this one. Two teams, the lower parts of the MOAC standings, however, we're coming towards the end of the year. Both teams, I believe, have three or four matches left. You want to go into the tournament on a high note. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity. One of the things I've written down, this is a great opportunity for both teams to get a win. Shelby's had a rough week. They're coming in off three losses. Two of those come to against Highland and River Valley, two really tough MOAC competitors. Gallian, I mean, Clear Fork, excuse me, is coming off a win over Marion Harding. So it's another good opportunity for them another, to add another win this week going into the end of the season. So we are just about ready to go as Zoe McNary will serve things. And we are underway from the corral. And it's an ace to start off. So Shelby gets on the board first with the ace. It's a great start. This is exactly what you want to see. Her second serve this time. It has been received. Conrad a little bit behind her head. It's blocked. Gets it over. Stays up, blocked down and finished by Conrad. And there's Conrad, I don't even know if she really had to get off the floor for that one. Good thinking by Marley Albert trying to displace that ball, maybe throw clear fork off a bit, but Conrad, the length and, and the reach that Conrad has was just too much there. All even at one here on the Ohio I Associates scoreboard, just underway here on senior night. Bit of an overpass by Shelby and that's gonna turn into points for clear fork. Not the pass you wanted to see off the reception. No, nah, a bit of a miss hit. Looks like it just came off that, that elbow area, the wrist area a little bit wrong. Clear Fork adds another good point. Christy Carroll to Sir, daughter of Coach Dave Carroll, Clear Fork football squad. Another block by Conrad, this time 
picked up though. She'll have a chance with the kill here and she throws it down. So she put a great amount of power on that one. No one in the right spot at the right time for Shelby. Not able to get the return. As you see on the JNF construction replay, just put it in the perfect spot. She had 147 kills coming into this one. Gonna be well over 150 by the end of this match, I'm thinking. Oh, I would agree. Free ball over to the Lady Colts. Set up once again. They looking for Conrad for a second, but miss hit, bumped over. Nice strike. And there's Marley Albert making her first mark impression on the game. She's gonna step back to serve as well, so see if she can add to that high list of aces she has going on the season. Sixth in the MOAC in kills. 3-2, Lady Colts. Low serve that time by Albert. Dug up, but a little bit of miscommunication, and Clear Fork gets the point, 4-2. Yeah, that was go good effort by Zoe McNary there, but there was just no one else around to return that over to Clear Fork. These two teams met earlier at Shelby on September 14th. Went five sets, Clear Fork won three sets to two. Nice strike and finish that time by Miller. Back to a one point game, but at Shelby it went 27-25 Clear Fork. Shelby won the next two sets, 25-21, 25-18. Clear Fork came back and set forth a 25-11 win and then finished things out 15-11 in set number five as another ace, this time to Demi Hip. We're tied at four. Yeah, and Demi Hemp's a name you don't want to leave out from that long list of offensive weapons Shelby has as well. You know, Bat there has the honor of wearing the libero jersey. See if she's able to get a little bit of a streak here going. Four all, four all early on here in the first set. Up for Conrad, off the block and through. So, like we said in the keys, they're going through her early. Yeah, I... I don't know what much you can do with the speed and power she just put on that ball other than put your hands up, hope it's going to get set up for your team, but not able to get it done there. Conrad the serve. Free ball back over. Conrad has it. Set up. Cross shot. Gets the back line. Nicely done. By Wirtz. It's 6-4 it's clear for it. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Adrian Wirtz is the second highest in kills on the team with 45, able to add another one to the list. Conrad low serve, but there's an ace. She was 11th in the MOAC in aces. That is her 30th of the season. It is 7-4. Yeah, and I think as long as she's back there, they're gonna just go let her open it up and hit that ball as hard as she can and, and hope to keep building onto this gap they're building here with Shelby. It's going to be a free ball. Setting up Wirtz again. This time it's corralled up. Shelby with a chance. Through the block and down. Miller gets the point. Yeah, I think McKenna Miller took a little bit of aggression out on that ball that time. Looking to get things back close to even. 7-5 clear for it currently. Really good swing by her. Now she'll serve it up, but into the net. Yeah, and that's a tough break. Just get the ball back. Hit it too short right into the net. Ashton you know Roberts. Sorry, Hayden. Ashton <laughs> Roberts checking in as well as Peyton Bailey. You may finish now. Oh, uh, yeah. Just going to say, you know, that's when you want to get back. We didn't even jinx it this time, Travis, but See, I helped you out. there. It wasn't your fault that time. I cut you off, but back-to-back -back service errors, and it's 8-6. Eve Schwimley, the freshman to serve. She did pretty well against Crestview the last time we saw this squad. Yeah, I was going to say, that's another name we talked a lot about when we watched them over at Crestview. Eve Schwimley, while she's one of the lower classmen, she's definitely making her mark on this varsity squad already. Off the block, can't get the dig. That'll be a point for Grove, 8-7. Good serve there. Looked like it was going to stay in nonetheless. Might have hit that back line. Clearfork had to play it, but played it a little too late. Goes off the Raptor and down, and we're tied at eight. Yeah, not too many times have I seen the Raptors be too many players' friends this season. A 3-0 run by Shelby's finished by a service error. Clearfork gets the lead back. 
as Emma McCoy will check in, and she will serve. Clear fork by one, first set. Nice pass, good setup, and it's going to be a point just off the fingertips and give Albert another kill. Yeah, she just wasn't able to. She had the right idea for clear fork. She just wasn't able to get that ball put in the right position. Just tips it right back. Going to give Shelby the opportunity to take the lead. Seibert with the serve. Nice strike. And I think that might have been tipped. We'll take a look. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I think that is the right call by the line judge. It was out, but might have got a little bit of deflection. I was going to say, the only way that, that was going to go that way is if it got tipped, because we had a pretty good shot from it from here. Pushed over. Well, a bit of miscommunication. Nonetheless, it's back over, but it's out. That time, Shelby didn't go for it, and we're tied up at 10. Yeah, that one's going to stay out. And as you said, I think there was a little bit of miscommunication there in the middle of the court between Conrad and... Um, just not able to connect that time. 10 all here. First set. Nice change of pace. And the kill by Ashton Roberts. Shelby was thinking they were going to go to Conrad. Roberts saw the opening, gets the point. It's 11 10. Yeah, those are those timing plays I really love to see. Really takes a defense off its guard. You didn't see it coming. Always good to include a few of those in your game system. Shelby answers right back with the kill. Miller. It's a first to 14 set here to open things up. Albert to serve. Conrad, back line goes. Becker Conrad really showing off here on senior night early on. She has a, I, at least half the points for the Lady Colts thus far. Yeah, I was about to say, definitely at least half the points. This offense is running through her right now. We'll see how she keeps up as the serve comes over. Bit of an overpass, it's gonna be bumped over. And a miss hit. Just not able to get under enough to get over the net. Bit of an awkward timing with the jump. It's gonna stay tied up at 12. Another closely contested match here by these two. Like I said, this went five sets. Hip the serve. Conrad, big swing and finish. Yeah, right now they don't have an answer for Conrad. Um, I don't know if they have anyone up front who's gonna be able to get up high enough let alone get in front of that ball before it's already smacked down onto the court with the speed that she's hitting it with right now. Conrad once again will serve. Got it over the net. Corralled up. Chance for Shelby. Off the block. Stays up. Nice swing, but it's dug. And the miss hit turns into a point. Yeah, that time, that was one of the few moments where we see the Raptors did not did treat our opponent with a little bit of favor. She'll be able to still continue play. Good heads up by them. Nice swing inside the line, and Clear Fork again gets the lead back. Just using that sideline gets it to fall. Yeah, it really seems like this closest line near us has really been the the hot area for Clear Fork during this first set. See if they keep targeting that area. Pushed over, barely dug up by Roberts. It's gonna be a free ball back. And they're gonna say she didn't get it over the antenna when she came back. That's going to be an ace off the Raptors, and Shelby gets the lead. So we'll take a look one more time at this hit. It has to go to the left side of the antenna when it goes through. I, we don't have quite the angle, but if it goes even over it, 
it's out. So both yeah, referees talked about it. The line judge talked about it. I believe they got the right call there. But nonetheless, ball don't lie because Shelby with the service error were tied up again. Yeah, it's looking like it's uh, going to be one of those right down to the wire so you can get to 25 first, but they may need to go beyond 25 even here in this first set. Nice dig up. Push back over. Bit of an overpass, but adjusted, and we play on. Free ball. Back to Shelby. Another overpass deflected over. Shot just too long, though. Good effort there by Albert, though. Twice she was able to deflect the overpass over the net and continue the point. But that shot just a little too hard. Yeah, that was a great look by Marley. You could tell where it was headed, but just a little bit too strong, as you mentioned. Free ball to the Lady Colts. Pushed up the middle block, stays up. 16-15 Lady Colts. Looking to add on here. But the Raptor <laughs> once again, just too much of a, a bump there. Goes off the Raptor, deflects down, and we're tied again. Yeah, you know, right now, an early leader for our play of the game, Travis, is the Raptors here in the Colt Corral. So we'll have to keep that on our minds. That was a bit of a knuckler corralled up. And it turns into a point. Nice swing. I was just about to bring it up, you know, it's tough right now. Shelby needs to look to get points while Conrad's out. But sure enough, she checks right back in. There's Lauren Fermi with the swing. Short serve dug up. Off the antenna. And Clear Fork now up two. So finally, we get a break in that back and forth. Clear Fork with two straight. They lead 18-16. Flynn will serve. Student section starting to get into this. Conrad, swing that's off the net. Nope, off the block and down. Again, that's a credit to the speed. She's hitting this ball with, as you see here. Set, up, bang. Timeout, Shelby. Lady Colts leading by three. That's her largest lead of the set. And Becca Conrad, she's playing a very good match thus far. Yeah, 19 points. You almost got to credit at least double digits of those points to her. You know, making sure that this senior night is not one that she's going to forget anytime soon. So far, as you mentioned earlier, we got the student section over there. It's always exciting when you see that for any sport. But I always like when they're in a gymnasium because they really get involved in the game. They become kind of that six-man mentality. So it's nice to see them here supporting the seniors for Clear Fort tonight. Love. They're doing uh, country theme tonight here for senior night. So we come out of the timeout. Clear Fort, three straight points. Has them leading 19 to 16. They have serve as well. Six points away from taking set number one here. Flynn will start it off. Swing into the net. Did not touch a Lady Colt. That's four hits. And the run continues. Yeah, you can start to see the frustration building on the Shelby side of the net. Hopefully they're able to recover and, and turn this match around. This set, I must say. And add that to the highlight reel for Becca Conrad this evening. Jeez, the <laughs> yummy ball. You're thinking she was going to wait back for the block, but no. Yeah. Throws the arms down and spikes it. 5-0 Lady Colt run. Cross shot, and finally Shelby gets a point to stop the run. Good shot there. Cuts the deficit to 21-17. They're going to need a little bit of a run themselves, though. It's late in this set. Overpass slammed down. Yeah, McKenna Miller was in the perfect spot waiting for that one. Just able to jump up, put some nice power on the ball, get Shelby back on the serving side of things. But they're still going to need to make some magic happen here and down 21 18. Ah! 
Here comes Conrad. Got it. No, they didn't say it was deflected. Let's take a look at this. And I think that was the right call. Yeah, that was a good call there by our officiating staff tonight. Right back to Conrad, dug up. Bumped up. Free ball to Shelby. Lady Whippets down two. Pushed over the block and down. Great heads up thinking as we saw earlier towards the beginning of this set. Marley I were able to take advantage of the momentum that's been fueling on both sides. Give it a nice little soft tap and rally off another point for the Whippets. 4-0 clear fork run. It's a one point set. They have a chance to tie here. Off the block and down, and we're tied up. And that'll cause Clear Fork to take a timeout. Both teams with 5-0 runs. Just when you think one of these teams is getting some comfortable, a comfortable lead, not the case. I was going to say, a lot of the volleyball we've watched this year, you know, four point, a four-point lead would feel tight. Four points in this set so far feels like a landslide for our either team to get a little bit comfortable. Not the case as we're notched back up at 21 apiece. So both coaches using a timeout here early on. First to four, win by two. I'd like to welcome everybody watching in on Facebook and YouTube live and free. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us some comments, we'll shout you out. Just like Debbie Ruffer, go Colts, win, win, win. Jody Flynn, shouting some folks out the Watch the stream, appreciate that. Michael Conrad, go Lady Colts. We'll check back in with the comments later here. A Shelby, out of the timeout, looking to take the lead. Conrad, off the net down. Her shot is just so strong that even if it goes into the net, it's still gonna power itself over. Yeah, so far there has just been no answer for the strength and speed she's able to put on the ball. The net cannot withhold it, and so far Shelby has not been able to stop it. Carroll to serve. Swung from the middle. Overpass, yummy ball down, but into the net, so it's gonna be a point for clear fork. Yeah, that's a tough break. You know, you saw number seven and number one for Shelby McKenna Miller. Kind of a combo. Right there. The just too much. Put too much power into that. Follow through goes into the net. Clear Fork two points away. But Shelby answers with the point. 23-22, Clear Fork here in the first set. And that's an ace, we're tied again. That was a great serve from Albert. That was a line drive right over the net. Had Good. a bit of a curve to it, yeah. Yeah, even had a little bit of that curve coming at it. Good effort by Clearfort trying to stop that, but we'll see if she's able to replicate that and do it here again. Win by two now, so one of these squads has to go two straight points. Conrad with the off pace, but comes right back. Bit of a rejection by the net. Clear Fork is gonna call their final timeout as Shelby has set point coming up. Yeah, I think that's a smart timeout. And I do want to know, I like the thinking of Conrad there. What have we been talking a lot about tonight? Her speed and power had the opportunity. They probably were, she was probably thinking, all right, they're expecting me to come with that. So just going to go for a little bit of a soft layup. Just not enough, just too soft. So it's nice to see that she's thinking about that though. And that's going to keep Shelby on their feet and off balance even more so, not knowing what she's going to come with. You saw Coach Albert talking to her girls there. One point away, they have service as well. And although the way they were only down by four, which again, like I said, would be close in most volleyball matches we've been watching this year, this would be a huge kind of come from behind. Seemed like momentum was definitely on Clear Fork's side, so we'll see what they're able to do here. Albert leading the MOAC in aces, needs one here to finish off the set, and she does. So the Lady Whippets come back and take set number one, 25-23. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back with the second set right here, live and free on the OH Report.
Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Like from the whippets there, especially late in the set. Well, I like the way they rallied back. Again, we talked about when they got down by four, I kind of saw their body language shift and change a bit. They looked a little bit frustrated. However, both teams using both their timeouts. I think after each timeout, they came out just a little bit more motivated, a little bit more fuel. They were able to get it done. And in between the break there, I hear over here Coach Albert kind of saying, I don't care how loud so even with that nice comeback victory, they're not settling. You can tell she's not 100% satisfied yet. So just stressing. She would have liked to. Shelby up to a 5 2 lead. In a humid gymnasium here. Gets the ace. 6 2 Shelby. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But here in the Another block and it's a point. Yeah, it looks like it's a bit of a series. 
over the place on the court here. Everyone was trying to get to the ball with the effort in there, but there wasn't a lot of communication. Not able to that time, so we're going to take a five. A five point lead, seven two, and a timeout. This match live in front of you. Mechanic Bank, MW Jnf Dug up, but a miss hit. I think she might have been surprised that that was dug up because that was a rocket. Yeah, that would have surprised me too if I hit that ball as hard as boom. Becca Conrad did there. That had a lot of force. Credit to Zoe McNary for Shelby able to get that one back up. And miscommunication turns into an eight. To a run to the Lady Colts. Too quick there, collides with hip. Neither of them are able to get to that ball. It's going to be another point for the court. They're finally able to take their first lead of the set, 10 9. Tied up again after the service area, so it was a 1.9. It was a 1.9 before that. Sorry, 
Right? Getting so used to these first matches here tonight and these ties. You know? Just doing those things that aren't going to damage where you put yourself in the position you put yourself in. Just trying to maintain the mistakes on your side. And I think we're seeing why that's such an important key to the game. 12, 10. Interesting to see how Shelby comes out of these timeouts because while we were there, Coach Albert elected to never use one of her timeouts, and I think Crespi only used one or two. So it's it's a good opportunity for me to see how does Shelby come out of timeouts. What what can they do when they get a check a second to get some water, um, ca catch their breath? Because right now they hold a five point lead, and last match or last set that proved to be not as stable. So we'll see what happens after they come out of this. 15-10, your score. Apologies for the glitch with the music playing in the background. Thank you guys on Facebook for pointing that out to us. You didn't want to hear us anyway. You just want to watch the match, <laughs> right? For Shelby, maybe they wanted the music to stay on. That was a miss hit. Clear for it gets the point back. But Shelby gets it right back due to another service error, and it's 16-11. The service errors have been heavy tonight. We'll see if that's something that both teams can crack down on a little bit. Announcer Jinx, there's another service error. Actually hit the back of one of the front line players for the Lady Whippets. And it's 16-12. Nice swing by Miller. Yeah, it's always exciting when you can get to see the action right up close. I think Miller, you know, from this angle where I'm sitting, it almost looks like she flows on that court. It has a lot of power coming into that jump and got a lot of elevation on that to make that point happen. Swung, stayed up, and clear for it gets the point. And no surprise there, it's Beckett Conrad. She has to get the attention back on, you know, the her mark is made as soon as she comes back off that bench. So we'll see if the four point lead show he's been able to build is gonna be enough to sustain Beckett Conrad coming back into this game. 17-13, free ball over the Lady Colts. Let's see if they go to Conrad, they will. Off speed, stays up. And a free ball just outside the line. 
Just missed, and it's a point for Clear Fork. They're down three. Conrad with the block. With Conrad with a huge block, able to cut it down to two. We'll see if they can rally off her momentum so far that she's been generated, generating single-handedly here. 17-15. Into the net. So clear fork, down one. And an ace, and we're tied up. Well, that four point lead was not big enough to sustain for Shelby. It's all notched back at 17 again. And into the net. So she had a bit of a run, maybe got a little too tired there and goes into the net. Shelby escapes with the lead after that run of points. And then we're gonna have a service air from Demi Hip over on the Shelby side. So again, the service airs continue. Kind of been a big point generator for both sides right now. We'll see what Conrad's able to do. Swing from the middle, gets it to fall. Yeah, Miller. Just off the block. <laughs> You're fine. Go ahead. Miller just able to get that back over. And I just have one of those feelings. It's going to come down to one of those, like we saw last one, two point game for both sides. Just my prediction. Off the block, but they were going backwards and it falls in front of them. And we're tied at 19. First to six, win by two. Kind of looking like the first set. Yeah. I thought early on when Shelby was able to put up some early points, get about a 5-4 point lead, it, it looked like it might be more of a runaway for Shelby. But as we take a look here at this replay, off the deflection, it's an ace. Clear fork leads. Off the Raptor, it's a double hit. I, <laughs> the Raptors just get me, I think, every time, Travis. You know, it's something that almost all gyms are different, so there's really no preparation for it as a player. Well, the older gyms especially are designed more for basketball and not volleyball. Correct. Double hit. Shelby gets a break there. Deficit down the one for the Lady Whippets. And number 12, Kendra Walsh going to check in. We're going to see her here on the serve. Bit of an overpass. Pushed back over. Somehow dug up over the net. Great effort from Walt. Good setup. Swing. Can't be dug up. And we're tied up at 21. And they do confirm that point. But point given right back into the net. 22-21, Lady Colts. Three points away from taking the set. Yeah, we'll see number eight, Emma McCoy, stepping back to serve. We'll see if she can rally off four points here and get this one done for the Colts, or if it's going to linger on a little bit longer. The sophomore with a big serve gets it over. Off the block, but into the net. 22-22. Yeah, and Shelby's going to get a couple of fresh bodies in there. We're going to have Maya Seibert back to serve. Just over the net on the serve. It's proud up. Big shot off the block and down. Sodder with some power there. If you take a look at the JNF construction replay. Yeah, letting Shelby know Conrad is not the only one on Clear Fork's side that can put a little power on that ball. 
Lady Colts two points away from tying this thing up. Blocked. And the shot goes out. Set point. Lady Colts have two set points. Flynn with a chance to finish. Off the block, Conrad puts it down and that's it. Becca Conrad, quick thinking. Yummy ball finishes it off and Clear Forks tied this match up 25-22 in the second set. We'll take another break, be back with set number three right here live and free on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Two sets complete, one going to each squad. Shelby 25-23 in the first, Clear Fork 25-23 in the second. Travis Berardi back here at Les Howenstein Gymnasium inside Clear Fork High School alongside Hayden Gray and Hayden. Clear Fork needed an answer, they got it. Yeah, that would have been one of those sets that would have really hurt, obviously going down two nothing. But I think the effort and the fight that they really had, it really would have hurt to drop that set. So a great momentum boost to propel them into here, which we're now going to have a best of three between both teams. And on senior night, I'm sure all of the girls here for Clear Fork, uh, you know, we have a couple seniors on Shelby as well, but this is Clear Fork senior night. So I'm sure they're hungry to go out and just keep this rolling and not drop another set. But it doesn't appear like it's going to just be so easy. Both teams showing incredible effort and fight tonight and... I've been highly entertained so far. So just about ready to go here. The Lady Whippets will serve. That'll be into the net. So not the way you want to start the set. Miss hit. No, I think when, when both teams get a chance to look back at the film, they won't be happy with the number of serves that have found their way into the net this evening. But that's not to overlook the share of great plays we have also seen here this evening. Carroll gets it over the net, and it's an ace. Low flying shot there just over the net. Right across the net, it just dipped down to the floor. And clear forks out ahead 2-0. This time, Carroll tries the back line. And it turns into a Shelby point. I think what we begin to see that early on, both teams struggled to really pull away. Clear Fork did get to a little bit there in that second set. So we'll see if to about 10 points, who's going to really be able to pull away if it's going to be as close as the first two have been. They're going to say she went underneath the net. Let's take a look. Mm. It's close. <laughs> Just another reason why I don't particularly envy having to be an official. They have a really tough job, have to make some really hard calls. So that's a shout out to all the officials in the area. But in most sports, ball don't lie. Point return to Correct. Clearport. And it's three to two. Oh 
Great effort by Schwemling to keep that in play. Conrad, big swing. As you see here in our JNF construction replay, Conrad just continues to add to her highlight reel that she's producing just here and tonight. So we'll see if she can keep it up. Let ball, overpass, turns into a free ball. Set up for Conrad again, yes. <laughs> Becca Conrad. Whew. Yeah, you can feel the energy in this gym after she is able to connect on one of those. The students are loving it. Fans are loving it. And it's an ace. But we've seen from Shelby before, it really, they don't, doesn't let them phase themselves for a while. They might go down a few points, but you know they have that run in them to get back into the set. Yeah, I think that they're one of those teams that's not going to get too down on themselves too quickly. They're not going to count themselves out. They're just going to continue to play their game, communicate, and see if they can get back into it. They fake the Conrad. Double set. Conrad blocked. Another chance. It's going to turn into a free ball. No, can't get it. So the block really threw them off there. Yeah, I think that's, again, one of those credits. McKenna Miller able to get the block, as we mentioned, with the first one that happened back in the second set. It almost stuns and it opens the eyes and makes them go really big for the other side because they're just so used to that connecting. Hip gets the serve over. Swung off the block, dug up. On the other end, Miller's shot is dug over the Conrad. Yes. And that one is able to connect. Con <laughs> Conrad's going to get back to step and, and serve here. So we, potential for a few aces from her definitely. as well. Definitely. You got to give Carol credit, though, with the assist. She had 142 coming into this, 10th in the MOAC. But she's been really feeding Conrad well tonight, and it's showing. Under the net. So Conrad gets the point, and she'll stay back there to serve again. It's 8-3. Yeah, back to what you said, Travis. You know, you have to look at the people around Conrad as well and give them their credit. Conrad couldn't do what she does if she didn't get a good setup from her teammates, so it's a whole team effort for them. Free ball back over. Off the block, stays up. And Clearfork gets the block. You saw Shelby scrambling right there. A couple of over hits, got him out of position, trying to get it over, and Clearfork stayed ready at the wall, blocked it down. They lead by six. Yeah, Clearfork looks a lot more comfortable in the system they're playing right now. Nice pass by Miller. Dug up. Shelby with an opportunity, and it stays in. Nice swing. Yeah, that Miller going from side to side as well to get the point. Yeah, that was great placement. You could tell Christy Carroll was a little bit unsure, couldn't tell whether that was going to stay in or out, hesitated a bit, and Miller was able to get the point. Pushed just ahead. Not much they could do with that. Now that's a real head scratcher for me. I don't know if it if the ball hits so the rafter and bounces back over, it's out. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough. Anybody one, in <laughs> anybody in the comments that yes, were helping us out earlier, us. you want to help us? Please do. We know it's our job to know these things, but the one time we actually, <laughs> you know, when Mackenzie <laughs> don't Weaver's have not answer, here, yeah. we don't know. Big swing, but it's out. Yeah, don't understand it. I, I know it hit the rafter and bounced over, but maybe because it hits it on one side. The ball can't come back over on the other side? I don't yeah. know. Maybe something after the set could go down and get a little explanation of. Nonetheless, Shelby got the point back. They still trail by five. Swing just out. I like the idea there, but just a little bit too strong. Yeah, just a bit too much. It's hard to judge when you're going from that cross court, back corner angle. So just a little bit too much that time. 11-5 clear fork here in set number three. We're tied up at one set apiece. 
Swing from the middle. It's going to turn into a point. I was really impressed by the extension. Um, Miller really able to make herself go up there, get that ball, and put it in a great spot that Clearford just wasn't able to get a good return on. 11-6, Clear Fork leads set three on the Ohio I scoreboard. Free ball to Shelby. Swung cross court, got it to fall. So here comes that run that Shelby's had the last two sets, Hayden. Yeah, and you know, I don't think it's coincidental around the time of these runs. That's when Conrad is spending her time on a bench, not to sound like a broken record, but now it's the time for them to try and get down what they would like to up close to the net if they have any plans of catching back up in this set. Swung off the net, into the net, four hits. It's a three-point deficit now for the Lady Whippets as they continue to claw their way back. High swing there. That might have been out. And it turns into another Shelby point. And it's going to be a timeout for the Lady Colts. Yeah, you know, I think that's a good timeout because on the flip side of what I was saying just a few moments ago, this is an opportunity for Clearfort to show that they can still, they have more than just Conrad to fuel their offense here this evening. It's a good opportunity for some other girls. You know, we talked earlier about, um, uh, I'm blanking on it, Adrian Wirtz. <laughs> She's someone on the team who probably gets a little bit of a shadow to Conrad, but has an opportunity to show that they, are, you know, can run this offense and, and compete well while Conrad is on the bench. One thing I will be looking for as we come out of this timeout is communication. I still have yet to hear too loud of, and you know, that's every team might do that differently, but I haven't heard much in the way of this yelling um, that was mentioned earlier. So I'll be looking to see if that comes into play with Shelby down to nine to 11. Kept up, back over cross court. Here's a chance for the Lady Colt to get a point back, but it's too strong. 11-10. And we're slowly inching our way back towards a tie. Seibert back to serve. Over the net and out of bounds. So finally, Clear Fork gets the point and Becca Conrad off the bench. And here it comes. We'll see if Shelby is able to deal with a fresh Becca Conrad coming off the bench. I'm sure she's going to be looking to get back on the board very quickly. Great effort to rally after that ball got jumbled around on the rafters for a while. And then you have Albert and Lewis on the block for Shelby. Doing a phenomenal job. And we're going to continue this back and forth, back and forth that we've been seeing the first two sets, Travis. Serve over the net. Instead of going to Conrad, quick little push over the net. This time they're going to set it up for her. Didn't get all of it, turns into a yummy ball. Stayed up. Conrad fakes off the block and into the net. Yeah, and that just looked like a lot of timing play for Lewis, for Shelby. You could see she was looking to connect with that ball. It looks like it fell just a little bit quicker than she anticipated. And unfortunately, it went into the net. Clear Force going to look to add on to their current two-point victory. Lead, excuse me. Big swing, back line, got it. 13 to 12. Eve Schwemler is going to come back to the game as Kendra Walt takes a break. Marley Albert with the serve. 
Conrad. Nice push by her. And clear fork back up two as you take a look at the JNF replay. And that's something that makes her game very dangerous as well when she doesn't have to go to the absolute power hits that she has when she's able to just place that ball in a spot that they weren't anticipating. And they're going to say clear fork goes underneath the net. So Shelby gets the point back. Set up for Conrad. She's able to get it done. Number 10, Jenna LaFon for Shelby, just not able to get under it quick enough. Clear Force going to hop back up to a 15 13 lead with Conrad back to serve. And you want to see Conrad get a couple points just like earlier before she takes a seat on the bench because that's like we've seen where Shelby gets their run from. Pushed over off the block and down. Yeah, that ball just took an unfortunate bounce off of Lauren Fermi's set. Rolled back on clear fork side, and Shelby looking to cut it down to one. Here come the whippets. A uh, bit of a miss hit, but somehow still gets it across the net and down. If you take a look at the replay, kind of a frantic shot, but in between the antennas, just over the net. And Shelby's tied this up at 15. Change of pace. Shelby was on it, though. And they get the point. What they want to do right there was just get it, just tap it over top of the block. And sometimes with the block there, you have nobody behind them. She found that perfect spot. Yeah, those are one of those tough plays, but they were able to execute it perfectly right there. What a serve that time. Just over the net, got it to drop, and Clear Fork's going to have to take their final timeout of the set. While we have a moment, let's take a look at tomorrow night's high school football schedule, broadcast schedule. First, we have three live streams as well as two highlights. First off, Plymouth at Crestview, the game of the night for the OH Report. That will be seen on our Channel 1 on YouTube and on Facebook. We have a highlight of, I think, the biggest game of the night, not only on the OH Report, but in the area. West Holmes at your Shelby Whippets and Shelby Whippet fans. Our Storm Blunchley, our cameraman for tonight, will be at Skiles Field for a huge one. Hayden, you and I will be down at Danville at Centerburg as both teams look to get into the playoff race. And we'll, well, we still have a moment. That'll be on our channel four for YouTube on our Facebook. Jeff Mar John Marhefka will be on the call with me. And then two more highlights, Fredericktown at East Knox and Galleon at Ontario. Actually, Fredericktown at East Knox is gonna be on our main YouTube channel. That will be a live stream. Coming up tomorrow night, football Friday night, week eight already of the high school football season. Well, Shelby able to add a quick point there, but as you said, Travis, it's crazy to believe we're already here nearing playoffs for volleyball, week eight of football. It's just going by so quickly, but we're all excited for another full action pad night tomorrow evening. And it's just about tournament time, not only for football, it's clear for it goes into the net, but for volleyball, you have golf going into districts, cross country in the districts, so. It's a busy time for fall sports. We're getting ready for tournament time for volleyball and football for our live streams. Three ball back over, but it's out. And now Shelby with a five point lead. Yeah, and that's quite the turnaround, able to finally get a bit of sustainment of this lead. We'll see how fast they're able to climb to that 25. Into the net. Lady Whippets, four points away from taking a 2-1 match lead. Pushed over. Whippets with a chance. Free ball by Clear Fork.
Good rally going on here between the two squads. That shot, strong, takes a deflection off the light, stays up, Yanni ball. Wow. And they're gonna say clear for it, goes into the net. So an unlucky break there by the Lady Colts. Ball took a deflection off, off one of the lights, through the Raptors, somehow is kept up, and it turns into a mistake by Clear Fork. And now Clear Fork has a free ball back over. Shelby can add on here. Off the block and down, and they do. Yeah, and this rally by Shelby and this, this current scoring streak for them, something I've noticed during that I talked about earlier, I'm really starting to hear a lot of yelling communicating down on that floor, so I think they're very hungry for this set. Let ball, kept up. Can the Lady Whippets get set point here? They cannot. Just out. And Clear Fork finally gets a break. As they will sub in Bailey and Roberts. Clear Fork needs a run here. Down seven. They can afford to only give up one point. And that'll help. It's an ace. Slowly but surely, there's always seems to be one run left in either team until they get to about 22, 23 points. So we'll see if Clear Fork has it in them again in this third set. Overpass, nice job corralling it. <laughs> Nice little set. Yeah, Good you, swing. You could, see, you could see the eyes of Natalie Grove light up there. I think she even surprised herself that, that that play looked as clean as it did. It was a really nice job there, the setup, the delivery. Seven set points now for the Lady Whippets. And it's out, so that'll do it. Shelby takes set two, 25-17. They take a two sets to one lead. We're going to take a break, be back with set number four right here, live and free on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Three sets down here in Clear Fork as the Lady Whippets of Shelby with a 2-1 match lead, looking to close things out here in set number four. Travis Berardi back here with Hayden Gray. And Hayden, Shelby, like you said, communication really helped them out in that set and it allowed them to take the 25-17 victory. Yeah, I think communication, we obviously talked about how vital it is in all sports especially elevated importance in volleyball because there's so many different variables and so many different things could happen if you don't communicate because everyone's position on the floor is so important. So I think that was a big part of their win there. On the Clear Fork side of the net, I have seen good communication from them as well. You know, they're currently sitting down two sets to one, but that is not to take away from what they've been able to do so far this evening. And watching them earlier, we got to t watch them you know, a few weeks back, take on a really, really good River Valley team who's also here in the MOAC. And even though they dropped that match, Clear Fork is not a team that's going to just shy away from being down. So I'm really excited to see how they play here in the set because 2-1 obviously is not going to be enough to get the job done. So I'm really excited to see how they battle because they're not, the, they're not a team that gives up very easily. So I'm really excited. Still got the student section here. There's a good crowd for Senior Night. So... It's a great place to come and watch volleyball. Yeah. 
So just about to be underway, we are here in set four. Can the Whippets close things out or can Clear Fork force a fifth set? And Shelby's going to get on the board first. Just a little bit of a miss hit off, not able to get the return over for Clear Fork. Conrad with a chance, just touches it over, it stays up. Free ball back to the Lady Colts. And a miss hit on a swing from the middle of the court. Shelby up 2-0. That was a good setup by Ashton Roberts for Clear Fork, just not able to connect, get it over to the Shelby side. They're going to strike again. Off the block and down. Three in a row for the Lady Whippets. Yeah, you could see the frustration from Conrad after the play ensued there. She was in great position to get that one. A lot of the time she will, so a rare time that she didn't get that back over to the Shelby side. We'll see how she rallies from it. Kept up. Maybe a chance here for Conrad. No, it's not. She hasn't had a chance yet here early on. Now she does, and she mishits it. A rare miss hit by Becca Conrad, and Shelby's out to a 4-0 lead. Yeah, you're taking a deep breath and, and taking that gift that was given to you there, a rare opportunity for them not to have to try and block Becca Conrad. Cross shot stays up. Big swing. Conrad just pushes it over the block, and it's going to lead to Clear Fork's first point of the set. Yeah, nice job by Marley Albert running in behind them there, trying to get, make something out of that play, but her field of vision was probably a little bit blocked there. Not able to keep it inbounds, and Clear Fork's finally going to get on the board here and, and let's go on a run. Carroll with the serve. Pass off the Raptors and into the net. Two straight. Carroll will get another chance at this. Bit of an overpass, yummy ball, and there's Conrad. And it's never a good sign if that ball is just going to be hanging up there for that long and that slow. Conrad's going to take advantage, able to get clear fork. Their third point of the set, cut it down to one as Carroll looks to continue the streak back serving. And both of those front line players from Shelby knew that yummy ball's up. They had they stayed down, hoping maybe Conrad's deflection would they could dig that up, but it's it's really tough to do that. But Shelby does get the point back. Their lead back up to two at five to three. Back set, off the deflection, and down. Yeah, Abby Sauter able to take advantage here. Gets a nice elevation, puts that ball right in the corner. Great job to keep it in bounds, and no one was able to get to it. Sauter now serving. Just over the net. That's an ace, and we're tied at five. Yeah, beautiful serve from Sauter as we take a look here. Just barely skips over the net. Not enough time for Cyber to get down and dig that one back up. Conrad got in the way there just a little bit. Turns into a free ball. Big swing and a big finish for Miller. Shelby back up by one. Yeah, I always like the look of when you're able to have two girls coming up. Ry Riley, excuse me. Yes, Riley Lewis and McKenna Miller are both running up, looking like who's going to get the set, so it really throws you off as a defense. Conrad, her swing is dug up, but off the block. Gives Conrad a chance here, pushes it over and gets the point. Sometimes not killing it is use your advantage. 
as yeah. we're tied up at six. Yeah, you know, that was a great opportunity. Good heads up thinking by Conrad to just softly touch it. She saw there was a big gap there in the middle, able to get it done. Conrad into the net. Hello, Abby. How are you doing tonight? Appreciate me being in there with Hayden <laughs> as one of your favorite comment commentators. So appreciate the love. Trust me, I'll get Hayden back home in one piece. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Shelby with a chance to extend on their lead. Overpass. Pushed over, and it goes down. And sometimes you just got to get the ball over the net. Yeah, you know, volleyball. As our Mackenzie <laughs> Weaver would say, a point yeah. is a point is a point. Yes, that needs to be said at least sometime every volleyball stream. And these Raptors have really hindered the play <laughs> by both sides. Yeah, you know, that's just something that, you know, all the sports that I've ever participated in, you just don't have to worry about something above you that's really going to impact your game in football and in track. So I give a lot of credit to all of our volleyball players here tonight and all over the state and everywhere because that's just an extra challenge you have to face. And Clear Fork takes their first time out of the set. They trail 10-6. to six. So one of those points got changed around on us. We'll fix that up. But when you're somebody like Mackenzie Weaver, Raptors don't play when you're at Syracuse playing <laughs> in the Carrier Dome. Certainly not. There's or when you're playing at UD Arena, you know. Not too much of a risk unless there was an incredibly impressive miss hit that would get up there. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Even the gym, you know, when I'm thinking about it, over at my alma mater, the gym in Shelby has a lot more elevation it with does. the rafters than this. So that's kind of one of those things, you know, yeah, it depends on the school and the age of the school. Something where Clear Fork maybe, if they practice in here, they might be a little bit more used to it. But you see it's kind of been detrimental for both teams tonight. So I don't know if it's something you can ever practice for fully. I want to thank our sponsors real quick. Scoreboard sponsor, Ohio Eye Associates, MVP sponsor, Mechanics Bank. Replay sponsor, JNF Construction, MWD Logistics, our commercial sponsor alongside Mechanics Bank. And that shot just a little too long, so another service error brings Clear Fork to within three. Roberts will serve just over the net. That shot just a bit too strong. Maybe hit it a little bit too low on the ball as well. She was unable to get it off the block. It's 10-8. Roberts that time tried the back line, but that was too strong. Yeah, I think we've seen from both sides the last three plays, a little bit too much strength has just been not what you wanted on these. They haven't been able to connect. We'll see how they're able to respond here on this serve. That's number eight, Zoe McNary is back. Whippets by three. Make that two on the service error. Yeah, the last three plays, you know, we've had too much strength and just not the right placement we're looking for. So we've had a little bit of a break in the action in the middle and the center area of the court. We'll see how this goes this, this round. McCoy to serve. Good setup Good. off the block. And like the effort there by McCoy, but just out of her reach. Yeah, Natalie Grove able to get one back after hitting one a little bit too hard earlier on as she sits down on the bench. 12-9. Good setup. Dug up, though. Tried to go cross court, but it finds the net. Yeah, I like what Abby Sauter was trying to do there. Again, one of those where it's a bit, I mean, I would find it difficult if I was trying to just position that ball right where she was going for, that's why I thought it was such a good idea, just not able to connect. Seibert goes into the net. You know, that's one of the bugaboos that Mackenzie Weaver does not like is service errors, and she would. This is a great match for 
the less impressive Hayden Gray to be stepping in for. <laughs> Into the net. <laughs> you underestimate yourself, my friend. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Bumped over, still up, and they are able to save it. Great rally from both sides we see going. And then Conrad with a, another rare error. Do want to get a quick shout out. Keith Swisher, Lady Whippets JV Soccer watching live from our bus trip. Go Lady Whippets Volleyball, Coach Blake and Coach Swisher. Well, uh, hope your match went well as that's blocked down. You know, Shelby's one of those up and coming soccer teams here in the area they yeah. just had they just started three years ago yeah last, you know two years ago was a jv squad last year was their first varsity and they've had some wins so good for them yeah and shelby's able to get another point so good for them here as well but yeah i'm excited to see you know soccer is something we didn't have when i was in high school and um it's nice to see them having some success this year and i'm excited to see where it keeps going so thanks for tuning in big swing and it falls that's what Clear Fork really needed that. A solder finds the ground. Yeah, I mean, Clear Fork is a long way from being out of this set. 16-12. It just, it's been hard because as teams have gotten, either side has gotten a three or four point lead. It's just felt like they have control, but, but Clear Fork is not to be ruled out yet. Blocked. It's a yummy ball for Conrad, but couldn't get a lot on it. Conrad again, she gets the swing there, it gets dug up. And into the net, so Clear Fork with a couple of points. Sixteen thirteen. Good set. Just over the block and finds the hole. Yeah, great job by Albert. Someone who's obviously seen and watched and paid attention to film on Conrad and the Clear Fork front line. And from the tendencies in this game so far, knew she was going to be ready for that block. So just a bit of a delay on that hit, was able to get a point with a block a little bit too early from Conrad. 17-13. That might have been out, but it stays up. It's going to be a free ball. That one is out. Wow, and Shelby actually asking for a tip, and that's how it's going to get redirected. So Shelby's going to come away with a point. So once again, the referee's making me reset the scoreboard. <laughs> 18-13. So a couple big changes there points-wise helping Shelby out as they build a five-point lead approaching the match victory. Nice swing, and that's going to lead to another point. Miller once again, and it's going to force a clear fork timeout. Shelby leading by six, needing six to finish things off. Yeah, that's a well-earned timeout by both teams. I'm sure both teams could use a bit of a breather as we show you teams that don't need breathers yet because they haven't played because they're going to play tomorrow, Travis, tonight. Or tomorrow, Travis, on the OH report. I'll, I'll take it from here. <laughs> you, you take, a, take a breath, man. Take a breath. we got Plymouth at Crestview on our YouTube channel one, also on our Facebook. Danville at Centerburg. Hayden and I will be down there. I'll be joined by John Marhefka. That's on channel four on our YouTube and on our Facebook. Fredericktown at East Knox on our main channel. And we'll also have two highlights, Galleon at Ontario, and then the big one, West Holmes at Shelby. I think the biggest game of the night. And make sure to tune in afterwards, 11.30 on our Facebook and YouTube channels, the Friday Night Pigskin. We'll have those highlights and a couple more, as well as scores from all around the area, analysis with head coach Eric Will. And I think I'll be on there as well. Not as good as Eric Will, but, you know. <laughs> Travis, I think I try you to need to give own. yourself some more credit. But yes, tune in. Shelby, six points away. Chance to get another one here. Be Becca Conrad is there with the block. 
And I'd imagine it becomes a very difficult game when you're right up close to the net and you're returning back and forth with another team. Not much space to breathe, let alone move, communicate. Clearfork able to come out of that one with a point. What a swing. That just stayed in. Let's take a look at the JNF construction replay. Yeah? Yeah. You know, you could hear the reaction from the crowd. They're not happy with that one. But ball don't lie, as you said, Travis. And that was just really great placement by Miller, something we had the luxury to be able to replay and see. Conrad, big swing. Somehow it stays up. And then a block. Free ball back to the Lady Colts. They need a point here. Conrad gets the swing and gets the point. Yeah, she's able to come away with it this time as you take a look at it. First one, Jenna LaFon. I think it took just about every square inch of her to block the first one from Conrad. But she made sure that the second time around, it was going to come away with a point for her team as she steps back to serve. And now Conrad's going to need a run back there. Because we've seen what Shelby can do when she's on the bench. Nearly in an ace. It's a free ball. Off the block, stays up for a second, yummy ball. And they're gonna say clear fork went into the net. That's a couple times tonight we've had calls like that and you know, you can hear the reaction from the crowd, but those happen so quickly, really only the officials can make that call. And we'll have to see if that point turns into any bit of a good momentum boost for Shelby and unfortunate for clear fork. Off the block and down. Shelby three points away from splitting the season series. Off the block. Another attempt, too strong. 23-15. And this is really where you're going to begin to get tested as a team. You know, you take a look at the Shelby side. I know Coach Albert smiling probably for the first time this evening. I know she tastes that victory, but Clear Fork, how are you going to respond with your back against the wall? It's off the block, stays up. Lady Whippets over to Clear Fork. And that one's out. So there's that communication, and it's going to set up match point. Nine match points for the Lady Whippets. Yeah, not impossible, but a tough ask here for the Colts. And Miller, who's fourth in the MOAC with kills, serves it, and that's going to be a miss hit, and that'll do it. So the Lady Whippets finish off set number 4, 25 15. They win the match three sets to one. We're going to take a break and be back with our player of the game. So stay tuned right here, live and free on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you.
Time now for our Mechanics Bank Most Valuable Player. And that is Marley Albert, the junior right side hitter for the victorious Lady Colts. First off, Marley, congratulations. Thanks. Um, this first set, you guys were down 21-16. It looks like Clear Fork was going to come away with the victory, but you guys went on a run yourselves. You went on a 9-2 run to win it. What Just what was said by Coach and one of the rare timeouts that she ever takes to get you motivated to come back and win that set? Well, recently we have not been able to finish. We've been in the position to finish in multiple games, and we haven't. So we know the feeling of being down and coming back and not being able to finish. So I think that that memory of not being able to finish kind of stuck with us, and that's what mo motivated us to win that game and keep going. Uh, Clear Fork, they came back in the second set, closed 25-23, and then you guys really pulled away after that. What did you see in the first matchup? I know the first matchup at home went five sets, were closed. What did you guys take out of that to kind of turn the tides on them this time? Well, we knew how good Becca is. Becca's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> she she had 31 kills against us the first time. So we knew going into this that she was going to get her kills. Um, but we just knew that when she wasn't in the front row, we needed to take advantage of that and take exactly, advantage of yep. every opportunity we were given. And we did that tonight. And that's uh, going on as she was in the back line serving. And then when she was on the bench, it really looked like mm -hmm. that's when you guys took advantage and it, and it worked out. Uh, this is a big win momentum wise. You have a couple more games left in the regular season. You have a couple tough tests mm -hmm. in the regular season. But what can a win like this do to you guys momentum wise going into the tournament? Well, we have struggled the last couple weeks. Um, but this is what we needed to be able to finish and go into the rest of our season because we need that motivation. We need that burst of energy to be able to finish and go into it. Well, congratulations, Marley. One more thing, if you would like to, look on into the camera and give a shout out to Whippet Nation. I know, you know, they were watching tonight. <laughs> shout out to Whippet Nation and the soccer team and also Kendra because it's her birthday. Oh, it's Kendra's birthday. Tell yep. her you said happy birthday. Is that why you have the cupcakes? Yeah. That's why you got the cupcakes. Well, Happy birthday, Kendra. Go Whippets soccer, and good luck to Whippets football tomorrow. A big game for them. But Marley Albert, congratulations. You are our MVP. Thank you. We're going to take one more break and be back here to wrap things up. That was our Mechanics Bank MVP, and we'll be back to wrap things up right here live and free on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Back here at the Colt Corral where the Lady Whippets come out with the 3-1 set victory to take the match. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray one final time to wrap things up. And what would you like from the Shelby Whippets tonight, Hayden? Well, I thought they were really able to do a good job um, paying attention to what wasn't working well for them. And it was hard not to, but they were able to see that the offense was going to come heavily through Becca Conrad, you know, Marley Albert giving her a lot of credit. You can see them out there talking right now together, actually. Um, so I think they were able to pick up on that and kind of say, you know, how are we going to just play around that? And they just really didn't stop playing their game. They didn't let that phase them too much. They started to communicate better, and I think they were able to piece together some good runs that obviously was able to give them a 3-1 to one set victory here tonight. And... I think it's great when, you know, I could see Coach Albert over there as well, some of the other girls talking with each other. Huge credit to both teams tonight. Um, another congratulations to the Clear Fork senior girls this evening. Um, they have four. Shelby also has two seniors tonight. 
So a big congrats to them. But I also think that's important too because both teams, I mean, you're only gonna you're gonna lose four big players for Clear Fork. Shelby losing two big players. But these are two teams that have been able to develop some success, and I think that that still lies within their lower classmen. So the Moak's always really competitive in volleyball. So I think that's just going to continue. The, the caliber of volleyball being played in the conference is going to continue to rise. And like Marley said, they had a very good game plan. They, you know, knew Becca Conrad was going to get those points. But once she was on the back line, once she was out, that's when they really took advantage. And, and it worked out as Shelby takes the match 25-23. 23-25, 25-17, and 25-15. That'll wrap things up here from the Colt Corral. I want to thank everybody that helped make this stream possible. Storm Blunchley up on the camera work. Shelby fans, you'll see him on the sidelines tomorrow at Skiles for the big football game. I want to thank our sponsors, Ohio Eye Associates, the scoreboard sponsor, Mechanics Bank, MVP sponsor, j &F Construction, our replay sponsor, Mechanics Bank and MWD Logistics, our commercial sponsors. Want to thank the folks back at the OH Report and BS Media Productions, Jory Hollenbeck, Brian Skaronsky, Adam Thompson, and the rest. Want to thank the folks at Clear Fork High School for allowing us to be here. Want to thank, most importantly, you, the fans. And Hayden, do you have anything you want to say? You yeah, to I want to thank you, the fans. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone back at our OH Report family. And because I didn't say it earlier, thank you to my beautiful fiance, and I'm sure my dog Willow at home also watching. Travis and I are happy to be your favorite commentators. Oh. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that, that that that's our cue to <laughs> sign out here. So for thank Hayden, you fan. for Hayden Gray, I am Travis Berardi saying so long from the Colt Corral. Shelby splits the season series with a three sets, two one victory. But for now, we out.